thank you, bless God. You, we bless you. We thank you so very much. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. God is such an awesome, awesome God. Father, we praise you tonight. We thank you for your presence, almighty God. Yes, as everyone is taking a few minutes to log on, uh, we just want to say God bless you. Thank you so very much for taking time out of your super busy schedules. We know a lot of persons have a lot of things to do. You got the kids home. You're probably going heading home from work with the kids or going to get the kids. But either way, you have chosen to log on here and be live with us. I am Evangelist Sidoni Bariner, and I'm joined by Pastor Cindy Jordan on my split screen here. And together, we are a part of Going Places with Jesus Ministries. Now, we're an online ministry, yes, <laughs> and we believe in sharing the love of Christ and caring for a hurting people in a hurting world, all right? So we just want to give everyone a few minutes to log on right now. I see that a couple of persons have already joined us. Um, so you got to say a big, big, big super shout out to, uh, I see Pastor DeAndre is online and I see also Markeisha Knott is online as well. I uh, want to remind everyone to go ahead and share, okay? Share, share, share. Click like and click share, honey. So you can share this good word with a friend. It doesn't matter wherever your friend is located, any part of the world. When they wake up, they'll be able to log on to this message and watch this broadcast or rebroadcast as it may be in their area. Um, what are we doing? You may be asking. This is our Wednesday night prayer and Bible empowerment. And for the entire month of April, we have been doing a very, very special series on prayer. The first week we had our live prayer service and it was absolutely amazing. So many persons tuned in with their live prayer requests and it was just such a blessing to be able to pray for the people of God and pray for their needs. Um, the testimonies have already begun to roll in. Um, for those who are watching who still have not given a testimony, but you know that God moved miraculously in your life, please feel free to do so, okay? Now, while we give a few persons <clears throat> um, a few minutes to log on, we just want to remind every single person that at the end of the day, when all is said and done, you have a friend in Jesus Christ. Don't feel lost. Don't feel neglected. Don't feel rejected. Don't feel like you're beyond reach. Wherever you are, the blood of Jesus Christ can still mm -hmm find you and it can still save you and it can still bring salvation and deliverance to your life okay now that said uh well you know I, let me see i got like two more minutes and so everybody gets, so it gives everybody a chance to come on you know how facebook is you got to give people a chance to interact with your videos and log on remember to share it with your friends your family members wherever in the world they are located, okay? If you're just joining us, if this is your first time, welcome, okay, to go in places at Jesus Ministries. Uh, I wanna go ahead and just start off by um, giving just a quick word of uh, prayer. And you know, in that time, people are gonna be logging on as well because tonight we are gonna be doing a part three of our series. Like we said before, it's a series on prayer. And so tonight we're going into part three and the section of prayer, the area of prayer we're going to be looking at this week is how to pray according to the Jesus model. Now, Pastor Cindy Jordan is going to be, you know, blowing that up for us, exposing us <laughs> to the inner workings and the inner meaning behind that prayer. It is a specific model that we find in Matthew 6. And the actual prayer itself is from Matthew 6, uh, verses 9 through 13. But if you want a much clearer understanding of it, you can just read all of Matthew chapter 6, uh, starting from verse 5. And you hear Jesus telling them when they pray, do not be like the hypocrites, la di la da But it is a very powerful um, expose, if you will, on how to pray. So many believers in their walk are confused. They're not really aware of exactly how to pray. Some want to do this, some want to do that. And so we find ourselves praying and we're praying amiss, okay? So it's a, it's a way the Bible says that, listen, you can actually pray and pray amiss. You can pray and God is not even hearing a single thing you're saying. Why? Because he's intentionally closed his ear to your prayers. And you're saying, well, 
How can God do that? God hears everything. He sees everything. Uh, he sure do. But there are certain stipulations that come with learning how to pray. And that's why Pastor Cindy will be teaching us tonight, according to the Jesus model, how to pray. You can get your Bibles ready. In the meantime, I see also Tiffany Mansfield is online. Hey, Tiffany. Thank you so very much for joining us. I've got my book here to take notes. I've got my pencil here to take notes. And of course, I've got my, I'm old school. I'm old fashioned. I got my big old Bible here <laughs> so I can follow along. I've got a Bible on app on my phone with different versions of the Bible. Listen, I come equipped and ready because this word is going to be super duper rich. Now let's get into it. I see we, we've gotten a chance to give a few persons a few minutes to log on. And so we say God bless to all the persons who are watching us right now. We are going places with Jesus made it. I just want to um, go in and uh, get into our prayer for tonight. Prayer without prayer. How can that be? That doesn't even make any sense. All right. We got to get into the word of God with prayer. And so God, we thank you, Lord God, for this time. We thank you, Holy Father, for you are holy and you are righteous and there is none like you. God, we glorify your sovereignty tonight. Father, we honor your majesty, almighty God. We come in, Lord God, with a repentant heart before you, God, broken and contrite spirit, God, for you said those two things, Lord, you will not despise. Father, we come in, almighty God, humble at your feet, almighty God, seeking the good word, oh God, that you provide, seeking almighty God, teaching, seeking wisdom, oh God. Father, your words say that every, if any man lacks wisdom, let him ask, oh Lord God. And so tonight, God, we come before you in all humility, God, asking that you teach us how to pray, not like the world is saying to do, God, not like so many books that have not been rooted in your word are telling us to do, but going back to your son, the example of Jesus Christ, oh God, Lord God, teach us how to pray. Teach us how to pray, Almighty God. Father, we thank you for this opportunity, O oh God, to come before you, Almighty God, the privilege, O oh God, that we have access to your throne, your throne of grace, Almighty God. And so, Lord God, Lord God, we lift up a hallelujah to your name. We glorify and exalt you, Almighty God, for you are great and greatly to be praised, Almighty God. Father, our lips sing your praises, our hearts sing your praises, God, our souls sing your praises, God. Father, we desire to be taught tonight. Lord God, teach us how to pray. Teach us, Almighty God, for we need direction, God. Father, we lack wisdom, so we ask, Lord God, that you teach us. Father, we lack a strategy, so we ask, Lord God, that you teach us. Father, we lack directive, so we ask, Lord God, that your Holy Spirit will lead us. Lead us, oh God. Lead us onto the path of righteousness. Lead us, Almighty God, in a good way. For your plans, oh God, for our lives are good. Your will for our lives are good, Almighty God. And so, Lord God, we exalt your majesty tonight. We exalt your sovereignty tonight. Father God, we bless your holy name, God. Lord God, we make a joyful shout unto you, O oh God. All the earth, Lord God. Lord, we sing of the honor of your name. My God, we make your praise glorious. How awesome are your works, O oh God. Through the greatness of your power, my God, your enemies submit themselves to you. All the earth will worship you, almighty God and sing praises unto you. My God, they will sing praises unto your name. Selah, they sing praises, God. We join, oh God, with nature and we sing praises unto your name. For you are a good, good father. You are a good, good God. My God, you are holy God. You are matchless God. My God, and there is none like you. You are sovereign in all your ways, almighty God. My God, you are full of righteousness, God. Oh, holy God, we bless you. Holy God, we honor you. Holy God, we exalt you. Father, as you arise, oh God, in our midst, as you arise, oh God, in the atmosphere, Lord God, my God, we know that all our enemies will scatter. We know that all our enemies will flee, almighty God, for we are exalting you. We are exalting you in our cars. We are exalting you in our closets. We are exalting you in our private places of prayer, God. Father, Lord God, arise, oh God. Arise, oh God, tonight. Arise in this teaching tonight, oh God. 
and bless the hearts of your people. Father, you said if we are hungry and we are thirsty after righteousness, we shall be filled. And Lord God, we are hungry tonight, God. We are thirsty tonight, God. We pray, oh Father God, that these words, God, these teachings, God, will rest, oh God, upon our hearts, oh God, will be written, oh God, upon the tablets of our hearts, will rest in our minds, almighty God, so that we are transformed and renewed, oh God, as we learn tonight, Father, all glory, all honor, praise, oh God, belongs to you. There is none like you, God. There is none like you, God. And we bless your holy and mighty name. We bless your holy and mighty name. And we thank you, Father God. Hallelujah. Lord God, we bless you. My God, my God. Hallelujah. Amen. In the mighty name of Jesus, we bless you. Thank we you. want to say a big shout out to um, Roseanne, who's on here right now. God bless you, Roseanne. Thank you for watching. I see David Stewart. I see uh, Minister Marcel Channer online as well. God bless you. Thank you so very much. And continue to share. I'm going to dip right now into a few announcements for the persons who are maybe new here. And this is your first time. We want to remind you that um, every single Sunday morning at 9 a.m. We have our discipleship program. It is an absolutely phenomenal program where they've gone back to the basics. Listen, this week, Sunday, is going to be super duper special. We're having our graduation ceremony. And so if you would like to be a part of that, just to support the graduates, just to support the persons who have stayed through the course and have gone through the rigors of learning and have submitted themselves to sound teaching, we ask that you come online and support them. You can send an email to request the, um, the private Zoom link, and the email should be sent to info at goingplaceswithjesus.org. And we would be more than happy to share that with you, okay? On a Wednesday night, well, on a Sunday morning, also at 11 a.m., we have our divine worship service. This is an hour full of worship and the word. It is so rich. It is so powerful. One single hour. It is on point, okay? It is something that will sustain you and get your spirit fired up for the start of the week. You don't want to miss it. It is a tremendous blessing every sunday morning 11 a.m we go live okay so join us and speaking of sunday last sunday april 18 we had our amazing event jesus to the culture whoa, 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 whoa. Bam. listen it was a slam dunk for jesus okay y'all the kingdom was blessed and we can honestly say because of all the events that unfolded on that day, God was tremendously pleased. You know why? We took care of the widows. We took care of the hungry. We took care of the orphans. We blessed all the people in all the categories that God has called us to bless. And so we don't do these things just to boast. No, we do them as a reflection of what God is doing in our lives. And so we are humbled that God chose our ministry to be one of the ministries in these last days, to be able to bless people the way we did. We had a tremendous outpouring at the Sunset City Park. It was so amazing. We gave out over a hundred and, I don't know, 120, 30 boxes of food. We had Liberty Dental on hand and they had a ball just sharing their dental hygiene kits with adults and children. So we wanna say God bless you and thank you to all our sponsors, all our volunteers, all our servant leaders, everyone who came out and lent a hand. I mean, people were in the splash pool and they were receiving their boxes. It was just such a blessing. The word of God was prayed, was given to them, released over their lives. They received it. People who never accepted Jesus Christ before came to know the Lord. It was just an amazing day. Thank y'all so very much. Y'all need to come on out to the next one, okay? We'll be posting some updates pretty soon and letting you guys know when our next uh, Jesus to the Culture will be every third Sunday we find a different park. We'll be having more details on that. So you want to stay tuned. Okay. On a Wednesday, you know what it is. It is prayer and Bible empowerment. Live, 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 live. Okay. So you can always join us. We start from 7 p.m. all the way to 8 p.m. And all this month of April, we're looking at the power of prayer. Okay. Now, mm -hmm. April 28th, next week, Wednesday, we'll be having our very special guest, Reverend Cynthia Cadogan, coming to us live from Straight Gate Pentecostal in Trinidad. And she will be bringing a super powerful word 
is going to be on prayer, but specifically the importance of prayer in the last days. You don't want to miss it. Okay. Get your books, get your pencils. It's, it's about to be lit. Okay. So join us then. On Fridays, you know, we have our youth empowerment service. It starts from 6 p.m. until 7 p.m. If you would like to request a link to be a part of that meeting, send an email to info at goingplaceswithjesusministries.org. And with that said, I will not hold you up any longer, guys. Let's get into the word. Pastor Cindy Jordan is here with it. I got my book. I got my pencil. Let's go. <laughs> Hallelujah. Thank you, Evangelist Sidoni. And as Evangelist said tonight, guys, we are going to talk about prayer. But specifically, we are going to dissect the model of prayer that Jesus gave to us. And we are going to look at it specifically from Matthew chapter 6, from verses 9 through 13. There are two accounts in the gospel of this prayer. We have Matthew that gave his account, and then we had Luke that gave his account. But for tonight, we are going to dissect Matthew's account of the Lord's Prayer. Some of us know it as the Lord's Prayer, the Our Father Prayer, whatever title you know it as, we are going to call tonight's teaching Jesus's model of how to pray. I know we have been talking a lot about prayer, but prayer is the, the essential communication line between ourselves and our Father. And, you know, Evangelist last week talked about prayer being a divine communication between us, human, mortal, unworthy beings, speaking directly to a holy, reverential, sanctified God. And I need to know how many of you tonight are ready. How many of you are good students of the word tonight? I don't need you to get lazy. I need you to tell yourself awake because we are going in tonight with a deep teaching on Jesus's model and how to pray. And this is not new. This is something that we have all heard before in terms of the Our Father prayer. Some of us say the prayer as if it was the back of our skin. It has become so na like second nature. We memorize this prayer growing up. We've memorized this prayer throughout our life. And so tonight we are going to get into the teaching. If you are ready on going on this journey with me, on dissecting the Lord's Prayer, I need you to do something for me. I need you to put up those praying emoji hands. I need to see who's good, a good student tonight that's ready to go on this journey with me. We have said this prayer over and over. Now let's take it apart and get some good life application skills that we can impute in our own prayer life. Let me see those hands. Put those hands up, those praying hands. If you are ready to get into the word, put in those praying hands so we can see that you're ready. And as I said, we're going to look at it from Matthew chapter 6, verse 19 through 13. If you are in the chat, be sure to share this, tag somebody's name on there so you can invite somebody to teach, to, to sit with us and discuss with us because this is going to be some good teaching, I believe, tonight. Amen. Let's say the prayer together. And I'm sure you all know this, but let's say it together. Our Father in heaven, <laughs> hallowed be thy name. Your kingdom come, your will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread and forgive us our debts as we also forgive those that trespass against us. Lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. And that is the scripture or the prayer as per the writings of Matthew. You know, oftentimes we drive into this prayer and we say it so evangelist as if it's like, you know, we're talking to the homeboy or the home girl or our best friend or it just is just it just comes out of our mouth. But how many of us really took the time and sat with those words to understand what Jesus was telling us on how to pray? Well, we need to go back before we move forward. Sometimes if 
if you're driving a car, you need to take a look in the rear view mirror in order to keep moving forward because there's a time and a place to glimpse back so you know what direction you're heading. If you look at the previous verses, Jesus was literally telling his disciples how not to pray. And so he was saying, don't come to me with vain prayer. Don't go to the Father, rather, with vain prayer. He said, don't go to be seen. Don't be like the hypocrites, the Pharisees and the Sadducees. He said, don't be loud and just using clangoring words and rep petitions and vain um, speech in prayer. And so the disciple says, now that you have told us how not to pray, they came to him and said, can you teach us how to pray? And that's how Jesus said, this is how you should pray. And that's how we get the Lord's prayer or our father prayer. I don't know about you, but I heard it as the Lord's prayer, the our father prayer, uh, different names, right? And so we're gonna get into it tonight. When you look at the Lord's Prayer or this model of how Jesus has taught us to pray, you're going to find seven petitions in that prayer. And so if you are watching us tonight, be sure to take some notes because this is something that you're going to need to impute in your own personal life. You're going to need to use it in your prayer because what we're doing tonight is sharpening our prayer skills so that we could pray on target, pleasing to the Father. And so I'm not saying how you're praying is not good. That's not what I'm saying. But we all need to sharpen our prayer tongue. We all need to sharpen our prayer skills so that we can be astute in our prayer life with God. How many of us are still in our adulthood talking in one syllable or two syllable words? No, unless you don't have a speech impairment or you don't have an intellectual disability, so we pray and we speak more than two or three syllables in a word. And so that's what we're doing. We are actually tonight sharpening our prayer tongue so that we can pray directly to the Father based on how his son, Jesus Christ, taught us to do so. And so in the prayer, again, there is there are seven petitions or seven specific uh, targets or categories that we are going to dissect tonight. So in those seven petitions, there are two major categories of prayer types. In those categories, you're going to have the first set of petitions, which are the first five petitions, are directly speaking about the divinity, the holiness of the heavenly father. So, so that's just to take us to a uh, pause right there. Do you mean that the majority of the Our Father prayer is about the Father? Yes, it is. <laughs> yes, it is. The remaining prayer petitions, the remaining prayer petitions are about you and I and our needs, our want, our desires, and our need for our Father to be present and to be active in our own lives. Do we get that? So there are seven petitions in this prayer, two categories. The majority of petitions are about the Father and the minority of the pet uh, petitions, sorry, is about you and I. So how many of us, you know, we're praying about us more than we're praying to the Father? We are praying, to, we are going to God with all our requests before we are even acknowledging who we are praying to. And so that is the first petition we're going to talk about tonight. It says, our Father in heaven. And that is in verse 9, Matthew 6, verse 9. I'm using the NIV version just in case anybody wants to look it up. And so before we can pray to God about what we desire, this first petition tells us we need to acknowledge God's divinity. We need to acknowledge him as the Godhead, the father of the Trinity. And so when we recognize God as the father, Abba, we are also understanding that he has all authority and that he has all privilege to do as he please because a good father will direct their children into goodness. And so when we pray to our father, we are literally praying and acknowledging him and being dependent upon him as our Abba father. Ephesians 4, 6 says, there is one God and father of all all who 
is over all things and through him all things are in and so we should be so humble according to this first petition that we don't say god give me first but we say my god i recognize you as my daddy i recognize you as my heavenly father and so when we do that we position ourselves in a place of humility we position ourselves in a place of surrender unto god and we go to god not with our motives first but with our earnest desire to communicate with our daddy. I don't know about you, but my daughters and my, my little baby son, but my daughters specifically love to communicate with their daddy. And they don't just want to come and say, sometimes they just want to talk to him. And how do you do that when we go to our natural fathers? We usually recognize him and say, hey, dad, hey, daddy, dad, can I talk to you? So what more can we say to us as children of the most high God? How dare we go to God with saying, give me, give me, give me, I need, I want without saying, God, I recognize you as my father. God, I recognize you as the Godhead. God, I recognize you as the authority where all things are in and in you, there is all things. And so God is not a dictator. He's not a, a slot machine. He is not our bank account. He is not our tyrant. He is not the type of daddy that is waiting for us to be um, put him in an idle place. But he is a type of God that says, I just want you to recognize me for who I am in your life. And that is your heavenly father. So that is petition number one. Let's move to petition number two. The next line in the prayer says, hallowed be thy name. So first we say, God, I recognize you as my Abba Father. Then we say, you are holy, because that line is basically saying, God, you are holy and you are sanctified. You are righteous in all your ways. First Samuel 2 verse 2 says, there is no one like our holy God. And so we want to go before God and say, God, I know you to be God and be, to be my daddy, but who is so holy like you that you would want me, an unholy child, to come into your presence? So when we acknowledge God as being holy, the very posture of our prayer life should change. The very words we speak in prayer got to be sanctified as we go before God. Praying to God gives us an insight into his purity and the purity that is desiring out of us in him as we go to him in prayer. So when we go to God in prayer as believers, we pray knowing that God is holy. And anybody that comes to him must come to him in holiness, in righteousness, in sincerity, and with earnest desire to seek his face first of all, and to seek his presence. We must realize that when we pray to a holy God, people of God, that there must be a pureness and a sincerity in our prayer, not a manipulative way of praying. Because when we go to God, we say, God, thank you. You're my Abba Father. I recognize you holy but could you just please open this door for me could you please just work this situation that's a prayer of manipulation and as far as i know our abba father will not be manipulated amen amen sometimes we get stuck in our prayer life because we are rushing to god with a laundry list before rushing to God in holiness. And I just want to make sure that we understand that holiness is a requirement for God in prayer. What do I mean? I don't mean perfection. I don't mean that we have to come to God with having a mask of perfection, of, of fakeness. What I mean is that we come to God with an earnest desire just to seek who he is and his heart towards us our situation. God honors an honest heart. 
He doesn't only look for a perfect heart, but an honest, the Bible said, a broken and contrite spirit he will not despise. What does that mean? Brokenness is a sign of humility. And a, a contrite heart spirit means a repentative spirit, meaning knowing that I am not worthy, knowing that I'm not holy, knowing that I'm not righteous, but my Abba Father allows me into his holy space so that I could commune with him. People of God, this prayer that Jesus has taught us, it is the key to access the presence of God. And some of us have been walking around saying that we are dry in the spirit, that we are dry in the spirit, we are dry in our prayer life. I want to propose to you that we have been praying out of order, that we have been praying disorganized. We have been praying monotonous manipulative praise. And some of us might say, Pastor Cindy, that is too harsh. But I am challenging you that everybody that is listening tonight to get back in order with with your prayer life. Get back in the pattern of prayer that Jesus has taught us. Who better teacher than the Son of God to teach us how to pray? And we are dependent on man, and we're dependent on intellect, and we're dependent on books and written scripts to teach us how to pray when Jesus himself, the Son of the living God, has taught us how to pray. Oh my God, my God, my God. That it was petition number two. As I said in the beginning, there are seven petitions in this prayer in two major categories. We are still in category number one evangelist that just speaks about God. People of God, get back to it tonight in the name of Jesus. Petition number three. Let's, we're moving down in the Our Father prayer. If you're just joining us, we are dissecting the Our Father prayer, the Lord's prayer. It is taken in Matthew 6, 9 through 13. I'm not sure if somebody's putting it in there in the, in the chat so everybody can catch it as they come in. Petition number three, it says, your kingdom come. Lord have mercy. Who, whose kingdom? Is it my kingdom? Is it evangelist kingdom? Is it Pastor Roger? Is it the Pope the King? We got no kingdom, people of God. What we do have is kingdom citizenship. And so because we are kingdom citizens, we are able to go before God in this petition. It says, this petition allows us to get to a place where the character traits of the kingdom of God is dwelling within us. We're not literally saying that there's a kingdom of God in some heavenly place that is going to miraculously, miraculously be on the earth. That is a different teaching. Yes, that is. there's going to be a different earth. and That's a whole different teaching. We're going to get there another time. But for this particular teaching, we are saying that we want kingdom characteristics to dwell within our hearts as we sojourn on this earth. It is saying, let the love of of God dwelling me. Let the faith of God, let hope, let joy be manifested in me so that more people can see the God in me and glorify our heavenly father. As kingdom citizens, we ought to represent kingdom citizenship or kingdom characteristics to the earth. We, I'm going to say that again. We ought to represent huh, not re represent, meaning we have to deliberately show kingdom characteristics in our daily life. Think about it. Any person that you meet, you are able to identify their citizenship, whether it's through their language, whether it's through their clothes, whether it's through their culture, whether it's through the very way that they carry themselves. Look at certain cultures. You know what citizenship they carry because they rep represent the characters of that nationality. And as disciples of Jesus Christ, we are, Jesus is telling us we need to do the same. No matter where you go in 
this world, people of God. The kingdom of God needs to be at the forefront of your identity. People need to see you and know that you are a part of the kingdom of God. Jesus is saying in the book of Luke, the kingdom of God is within us. My God, my God, my God. We are kingdom citizens, therefore it is within us. No one needs to, to, to question what kingdom we belong to. No one needs to ask you, are you a Christian? Do you, just say, you know, some people might meet you and say, there's something different. There's something different about you. And that is your kingdom citizenship that is being represented. There is a protocol in prayer. God first, then our request. That is the bottom line of the teaching tonight, people of God. Get back to the protocol. Get back in order. Let, I'm talking to myself, evangelist, because I know, I know, and I'm keeping it 100% transparent that I've gone before God with my list before even saying, Abba, Father. Am I the only one? I know I'm not the only one. Amen. 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 We're moving on. The next petition, petition number four, it says, thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. This is a big one, evangelist. This is a huge petition that a lot of us skip over. We go from our father, we're down in heaven, da 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 name, da 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 deliver us from evil, amen. But what about thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven? You see, that one gets us stuck in our prayer life. You know why? Because it requires us to die to our will. It requires us to put the prayer requests down. It requires us to re- organize and re-examine what we are going to God for and the motive in which we are going to God. So this is one that causes many believers to become despondent in prayer. I don't feel nothing when I'm praying. I don't hear God when I'm praying. I don't know if God is hearing my prayer. And so we give up in prayer. Could it be, people of God, that we have failed to acknowledge him? Could it be that we have have failed to come to him as a holy God? And thirdly, could it be that we have bring our will before his will? The despondency has nothing to do with God being absent because he is the omniscient, ever-present God. So he is not absent. What is absent is our order in prayer. My God, and it has disheveled the very nature of our spirit man to a place of a dryness in the spirit because we have come to God disorderly. Jesus says to us, there is a pattern in the way we should pray. Lord God evangelist, if Jesus could get it, who are we? <laughs> Come on now. He didn't need to do it. He didn't need to pray. He didn't even need to share this type of prayer pattern with us. But he came on the earth realm to unlock heavenly secrets so that we may have access to the divine father in heaven. And so acknowledging the holiness of God is a requirement in prayer. Acknowledging the God father, the head of the Trinity is also but what's also important is that we must be, un be able to surrender in prayer. God, not my will, but your will be done. Ah, how about not my will and mean it, though? We say, God, not thy will, but do we really, really mean it, evangelists? Do we really mean it? Is it vain repetition? Is it religious lingo? Is it to be heard like the Pharisees that Jesus warned us how not to pray? Somebody that really mean this petition, thy will be done on earth, is one that says, Father God, even if your answer is no, even if your answer is not yet revealed, then I still accept your will for my life. 
You see, we have to continue in a momentum in prayer. We go from high, higher heights to deeper depths in prayer, but we have to surrender. People of God, God, I tell you, God just had me sitting with this petition for a long time because we get deceived because of this very line. Jesus hung on the cross, people of God. And what? While hanging on the cross, he says, Father, Father, what did he do? He did just the way he taught us to pray. He first acknowledged the Godhead. He acknowledged him as Abba, Father. And then he said, could you take this cup, but thy will be done. My God, my God. He said his needs were secondary to God's will for our life. There is nothing more fulfilling but by being in the perfect will of God. Because let me tell you, I know what it is to be in God's permissive will. And some of the ways we identify being in God's permissive will is there is a long drawn out season of dryness and tedious work to accomplish the goal. You may find yourself in God's permissive will moving on a snail's pace and not seeing the result because God doesn't favor it. And because he doesn't favor it, there is a mutation in our movement and our acceleration. I know what I'm talking about because I've been there. And the moment I said, not my will and meant it, there was a radical shift in my life. Was it a complete easy shift? Absolutely not. Was it a comfortable shift? Absolutely not. Because what I had to do was die to my plans. I had to die to my will and surrender and raise again into the will of God. You're not just going to stay dead. You're going to rise again into his will. And in his will is life in the name of Jesus. Even though it feels like God's will is too much and the weight to carry is too heavy. Remember God is our loving father. Remember he will not give us too much that we cannot bear. Remember that he is not calling us to destroy us. Remember he will not hurt us. Oh my God, people of God, Matthew 7 verse 9 says, which father will give his child a stone for bread and a snake for fish? How much more our heavenly father will give to us? I want us to know, according to this petition, that God's will is not to deprive us from any good thing. God is a good God, so therefore his will will result in goodness. Come on, people, you can't lose with your surroundings render into God's will. You see, our measurement of goodness uh, um, is very limited. We might see goodness in a 25% of our life, but then we have forsaken the other part of our life. I'd rather be in God's goodness that is a comprehensive Comprehensive goodness for the totality of my life. Don't, you know, there's this 80 20 rule. The 20 looks so good. And so we leave the 80. People of God, do not be deceived with this world and the enticement of this world. Stand firm even when we face diverse temptations. Do not be deceived by problems. Problems doesn't mean that you're not in the will of God. Huh. Come on, somebody need to hear that tonight. Problem doesn't mean you're not in the will of God. We must remain steadfast in prayer. We must remain steadfast in our faith that his will is perfect for us. Oh my gosh, I'm looking at the time, but we're moving on. We are in petition number five. Somebody say number five, number five, petition number five. It says, according to the prayer, give us this day our daily bread. Now we begin to bring our requests to God. Hallelujah, hallelujah. We just spent how much minutes talking about just God alone. Now it is time to say, God, here are my petitions and my human nature. Here we begin to see a shift in the prayer pattern according to the way Jesus taught us. We now begin to pray our needs to God. 
bread what does that bread speak about it doesn't necessarily it only speaks about food no that's not what it speaks about it speaks about the very word of god the very what god speaks is life so you're actually saying god let your life giving word become part of who i am in my daily life this prayer is not to pray only on a sunday morning and in religious services this prayer is to pray in our daily lives and so bread here represents two things, our humanity, our physical needs, but also our spiritual nourishment as well. Our daily bread comes through spiritual enrichment in the word of God. You cannot be enriched by the bread if you are not reading with the word of God. It's the bread of life, literally. You cannot get nourished if you don't eat the right foods. And so in order to be spiritually enriched or nourished, rather, you need to read the word of God. Matthew 4, 4, man shall not live by bread alone, but by every word that proceeds out of the mouth out of God. Prayer feeds our spirit. It's life-giving. It is nourishing. It's strengthening and it's fortifying in our times of trouble. When we pray, God gives us this day our daily bread. We are literally saying to God, nourish my spirit, heavenly father. Refresh my heart again, Lord God. Establish your kingdom here in my life as it is in heaven hallelujah this petition number five also speaks of god's provision so i don't want you to walk away today thinking that it's just about spiritual enrichment which honestly is very very important but this also speaks about god's provision god's as a good father he provides for our needs he provides for us he doesn't want to see us begging bread but he said that he will provide according to his riches in glory amen god is a supplier he is our Jehovah Jireh. Hallelujah. Are you still with me? Are you still with me? Amen. Evangelist, are we, are we teaching something tonight? Oh my God. Amen. 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 Petition number six, petition number six, it says, and forgive us our trespasses as we forgive those who trespass against us. Woo! my God, my God, my God. Now, we just came from seven weeks of teaching on forgiveness. Could it be that forgive unforgiveness is a big deal with God? If it wasn't a topic that could be really, really separate us from divine communication with God, Jesus would not have included it in this prayer model. He could have talked about um, peace in your heart. He could have talked about healing in our bodies and this, but he mentioned forgiveness. Lord have mercy. People of God wake up on this topic of forgiveness. This, this really coincides with what we have been teaching evangelists on the topic of forgiveness. Seven weeks. While it may not be easy or natural to forgive, it is a requirement, I'm going to say it, it is a requirement to continue in divine communication with our Abba Father. The fact that Jesus included forgiveness in his prayer model should shake us to a place of awakening that forgiveness and rather unforgiveness is going to separate us from our father. He is requiring us to break loose from the chains of unforgiveness. And how do he do that? God helps us. He offers us an opportunity to understand the inner workings of forgiveness through his demonstration of forgiveness towards us. So we can't say we don't know how to forgive. But what we can say is it's not easy to forgive. But what we cannot say, Evangelist, is that we don't know. Because as kingdom citizens, remember we talked about kingdom citizens, we identify with forgiveness because it is who God is. He is a forgiven Abba Father. 
God's love is very active and moving. It is progressive and it chases after us being fueled by forgiveness. He is fueled by forgiveness. Why would somebody chase after us if they have, if they don't see anything worth loving in us? Come on, people of God. Why would Abba Father want to commune with us if he doesn't see it fit that we need to be forgiven? Because let's be real, people of God. We don't deserve God. Ha. Huh. We don't deserve his chasing. We don't deserve his love coming after us. But because of his heart of love and forgiveness, he comes after us, as the song says, with reckless abandonment, knowing that he will sacrifice his very son the same son that is teaching us how to pray so that we can have an opportunity to dwell in his presence. Mm. Mind-blowing, mind-blowing to me. And petition number seven. This is the last petition for tonight. And it's the last pieces of the prayer, the last lines of the prayer says, and lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. Oh my God, if you are here with me tonight, I need you to continue to put those praying hands up if you are receiving from this teaching tonight from our heavenly father, be sure to put your hand up and say, I am receiving. I need to just put it up, put your hands up or just put in the comments, say, I am receiving tonight. This is enrichment for our spiritual and prayer life. And it's first for me. I always say it is first for me, evangelists. I receive it first. I'm not going to feed you guys something if it's not nourishing, if it's not good. Amen. And according to this petition, it says, and lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. Lord have mercy. This, this petition evangelist and people of God that are listening, people of God that are here with us tonight, I need you to bring your ear a little bit closer because this petition demonstrates the fragility of humanity and our need and our great dependence upon our heavenly father. We cannot live a life pleasing to God without God. We cannot live a life that is worthy of his acknowledgement if without recognizing who he is. You know, some people might say, you know, well, I, I could talk to God how I want. And that's between you and God. I'm not going to get in the middle of that. My assignment tonight is to break down the Jesus prayer model. And then you take that, go with it in your prayer life and ask the Holy Spirit to lead you. That is only my responsibility tonight. And so we need God to lead us into all truth so that we do not get what? We do not get deceived and become comfortable in the sin and become entrapped into temptation. I want us to understand temptation doesn't always have to do with sexual immorality. Temptation doesn't speak to ad addicts only. Temptation doesn't just say, well, oh, that's them over there. That's them. Temptation, people of God, comes in many shapes and form. Temptation comes when God says, forgive your brother, but you refuse to hold on and hold on to your animosity that's just that's temptation and so temptation doesn't come blatantly you see the enemy is too smart for that he's not just going to ride up on us especially me with a, with a with, with a blunt and say here smoke this come on come on he knows better than that. See, temptation is going to come to me when I, I, I go in the grocery store, uh, evangelist, and um, I try to cut the line. Yeah, because I only got one item in hand. Hey, come on. Don't don't tell me all and try to do that. And you pretend you don't see the little old lady standing behind you. C come on, people of God. Temptation comes in so many ways that are very subjective to you. You cannot look at somebody else's temptation and say, ooh, she's so sinful, while you are yielding to your private temptations that nobody sees but God. Lead us not into temptation, because temptation ultimately, if we submit to it, leads us into what? Evil 
doing, which is literally sin. We cannot drink the coldest water. We cannot be so, you know, that I, I came up with this analogy. We can be so thirsty in the natural. Have you ever been really thirsty and hot and the only thing you can go for is soda, right? And you can drink all the soda in the world. You're still left thirsty. What quenches that thirst is nothing but good old agua. Amen. Amen. A good old water. And that's what temptation does. It brings substitute pseudo um, um, uh, treatment to a problem that we have that presents itself as a false way of handling a situation. Temptation tells us you don't have to drink water while you can drink soda. Temptation says you don't have to forgive because you were right. Temptation tells us that you don't have to honor your man and woman of God because, well, you know what? I know more. Temptation tells us, well, we don't have to submit to our people parents because they are not saved. Come on, people of God. Come on, people of God. God is teaching us tonight. Temptation doesn't come with just, especially for, I'm telling you, for church folk a church folk. It doesn't come with just all types of blatant sinful ways. It comes in very subtle ways. But what it does though, evangelists and people of God, it presents itself as an adequate solution to a problem but it really doesn't solve anything. It just complicates the matter even more. Hmm. We need God to keep us from temptation. We need God to keep us focused on what really nourishes and enriches our spirit. Knowledge is not wisdom. I'm just gonna say that again. Knowledge is not wisdom. Knowledge is human information. Wisdom is godly revelation. And so in order for us to keep away from temptation, we need a bit of wisdom and we need a bit of discernment and we need a lot of prayer. So tonight I am going to tell you people of God, this prayer model that Jesus has taught us, because I know we're running low on time, is one that brings us to a place of reorganizing the way we pray. Don't get discouraged in prayer. Don't get despondent in prayer. There is a literal template that God, Jesus has given us so that we can know how to approach God in prayer and yield a dividend, spiritually speaking, okay? Prayer is an example of our relationship with God. If you have an intimate relationship with your heavenly father, your prayer life will show it. <laughs> we need him in order to live for him. In order to get that godly wisdom that we are asking for, we need to communicate with God and we need to get back to the order. Jeremiah 29 and verse 12, the last verse I'm going to share and we're going to wrap up. It says, then you will call on me and I will come and pray, and I will listen to you. God is saying, when we get back to that order of prayer, he's waiting to listen to us. He's waiting to hear us from a place of humility and a place of surrender. My call and my challenge to you tonight is that you think about what was spoken tonight. Some of us may need to go back and watch the rebroadcast. It's here, it's on Facebook, so you can always go back and check it out again. But go back and reassess what we are doing now and how we can sharpen it so that we can be more astute in our prayer life. Put God first, put our requests second. Evangelist, you taught us last week or you challenged us last week, 15 minutes of prayer. How about we take this model and put it in to our, our time in prayer? And I believe if we do that with an earnest and sincere heart, we will begin to see a shift in our prayer life. I pray tonight that you receive this word. God bless you. Evangelist Sidoni, thank you. Woo! My God, listen, when I tell you this was a word on fire and in season, 
it never ceases to amaze me, Pastor Cindy, how for every single thing that God has called us to do, he has given us a template. There's a template to prayer. There's a template to fasting. There's a template to obedience. There's a, listen, it is in his word. It is in his word. It's in his word. Man, if you are just joining us, we're so sorry, but you caught us at the absolute tail end. You got to wait for the rebroadcast of this session. You caught us when we were getting into, we're just wrapping up rather, our third week on our series on prayer. Pastor Cindy taught us how to pray the Jesus model. It's called the Jesus model of how to pray. Next week, Wednesday, April 28th, we're going to be wrapping things up on prayer. If the Lord permits. And we're going to be hearing from Reverend Cynthia Cadogan straight out of Trinidad. She's going to be teaching us how to pray and the importance of prayer in the end times. There's a specific way to pray regarding the end times. So you don't want to miss it at all. We want to also invite you right now that if you feel like you were sincerely blessed, if you are a part of this ministry and you didn't get an opportunity to sow your tithes or to even sow, you know, help with the seed faith or to sow a love offering or just a general offering, we're giving you that opportunity right now. Log on to our website, goingplaceswithjesus.org. On the top right hand corner, you're going to see a big green button that says donate. Click the link. It's going to take you to a wonderful experience. It's called Tithely where you can actually, by way of a verified secure password, set up a direct link so you can make your donation. So every time you hit that link, it's just going to ask you to re-enter a PIN, a private PIN number that only you and AI knows about. And you enter that PIN, you'll be taken directly to our page where you'll be able to make a donation, pay your tithes. So a love offering. If you feel like you have been blessed throughout this entire series, we're asking you to sow into what God is doing. You're not sowing into the coffers of men or our pastors or our leadership. It's none of that. You're sowing into the amazing work that God is doing through this ministry. So we can continue to reach people all across the world. People in Pakistan are enjoying our teachings. It's, it's being used in groups for group study. It's an amazing movement that God is using us to do right here from South Florida. So we're asking you to partner with us. It will be a blessing to you. Once again, if you're if you're an old school person and you want to make a check, you can go ahead and make a check payable to Going Places with Jesus Ministries, PO Box 15371, Plantation, Florida, 33317. Um, go ahead and write the information, what the purpose of the check is for. And we just give God thanks to you and for you, all your prayers. Remember to submit your prayers. Our intercessors are still online receiving them. So you can send a DM with that private prayer request. All right, y'all go slide into the DMs and send those prayer requests in, okay? We, once again, are going places with Jesus Ministries. We thank you so much for sharing your time with us. You heard from Pastor Cindy Jordan on behalf of senior pastoral team. We say God bless you. I'm Evangelist Sedoni. It has been my esteemed honor. God bless. See you next time. God bless you, everybody. <laughs> Have a blessed week. God bless you. Go in prayer. Amen. Yes! God bless you. God bless you all. Amen. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. <laughs> Hallelujah. <laughs>